God is so amazing. He is so good. I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to try something a little different. And so we are using our um, uh, native talent here in Las Vegas. And that was Aria. Uh, Minister Arya Gaston, and she had a team of uh, 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 singers behind her. I know I've seen LaShonda Pollard. I know I've seen Kay Ashley. I know her husband Frank is on the drums. I've seen Dominique Gaston. So, so many of our uh, Las Vegas locals here. So, I said, I'm going to uh, trick Facebook this morning and we go <laughs> see if this going to work. And it did. So, um, definitely go on to YouTube and look her up, Arya Gaston. And so this morning we are going to get started. We ask God already to just come by here. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. Sometimes we just need him to just come by here and just sit and sup with us just for a minute, just for a moment. I remember back in mama and grandma used to use the word just sup with us just for a minute, just for a little while. Amen. My husband is singing on that. But hey, come on, Luana. Okay. Luana's husband is on there as well. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Good morning, Plachette. Good morning. And so, most gracious Father God, we thank you, God. We praise you. We lift you up. We give you honor, God. We give you glory, God. God, we thank you that we can even shout out to the mountaintops to just come by here, God. We thank you that we are not forgotten, oh God. We thank you that we can just call upon your name and you will come and see about us, oh God. We thank you that you are there and you are there all of the time, oh God. And so, Father, as we go into the word for today, oh God. We pray now that you breathe fresh wind on it, God. We pray now that it seeps into the hearts of your daughters on this morning, oh God. We pray now a global transformation now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so God is so good. He's so faithful. And so this morning, this morning we are talking about incubation faith. Incubation faith faith, incubation faith. And, 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 and I, uh, was uh, talking to a friend yesterday. We have a group chat. I got so many group chats. I know you got everybody got these text messages. You got a family text message group. You got your kids text message group. You got your cousin text message group. You got your, uh, your, your girlfriend's text message group. <laughs> And so we got all of these text message groups. And anyhow, I was uh, talking to one of my uh, text message groups, uh, my wealthy sisters, we call each other. And, and one of them was, uh, and I'm so grateful for her. Um, she was just talking about how um, she wrote out some petitions and, and God, uh, he, he came through and he blessed and he, uh, 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 her petitions came to pass of what she needed and what she asked God for for that month and we were just rejoicing and praising God with her because how many of you know when you praise God for somebody else when you rejoice over somebody else's testimony, when you rejoice over somebody's, uh, 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 over somebody's, uh, uh, what, what God did for somebody else, how many of you know that God will bless you in your rejoicing over somebody else? Because praising God and giving God glory and thanks for somebody else isn't selfish, right? Just because you haven't gotten it or you have, oh God, I don't know why you're taking me here, but just because God hasn't showed up how you want him to show up yet, because he hasn't blessed you in some things yet just because he hasn't did what he, you've asked him to do doesn't mean you have to be selfish and not praise God for somebody else who got blessed with it oh my God and so I said we're going to praise God for her and for what God just showed up and did in her life on uh, this month and, and even before the end of the month because I know God if you do it for her oh my God you can do it for me not only can you do it for me God but you will do it for me. Amen. And so I don't know why I went on that tangent, but I'm sure that was for somebody. Amen. Amen. And so anyhow, um, as we, um, we're talking and, you know, again, um, she, um, you know, wrote out some petitions and, and, and I, and I begin to think about how, you know, we write these petitions and I have my box. Um, I have a box over here. I'm gonna get it y'all. Hold on a second. Cause I think it's important. I, I know it's important. And I talked about this on one of my classes. And 
I have a box and, and I write out the petitions. My mentor taught us how to write petitions to God. And, and then I, I, I put the petitions in the box. And every week and I, I, or whenever God tells me, I go and I pray over these petitions. And anyway, um, and so he began to talk about, uh, oh God, thank you, Jesus. He just gave me a whole new revelation. And as we talk about the word incubation, and he began to tell me, uh, even now as he's pouring and downloading into me, how when we write the petitions and we, we put them in a box and it's a symbolization of something and, and we think about a baby, right? We think about a, 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 a preemie baby or a baby who was born too early and how they have to get put into an incubator, right? And inside that incubator, it's kind of like a box or it's kind of like a, you know, the, a, a, it's a clear, uh, uh, like a clear box pretty much, right? And you put that baby inside and I just think about how when you write your petitions and you're writing down God this is what I'm asking you for this is what I need you to do these are the people I need you to deliver I need you to deliver my son I need you to deliver my husband I need you to deliver my daughter God I'm looking for a financial blessing I'm tired of being in lock lack God I need you to show up in my business I need you to show up on my job God I need you to do all these things and so we're writing these things down and we're putting them in an incubator oh God thank you Jesus Hallelujah for the revelation. You're putting them inside the box in an incubator. And what is an incubator? What is the incubation process? And right. And so an incubator is defined as a process of incubating eggs or cells or bacteria or what have you, right? And and and, 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 it, and it, it what happens is it, you go in there because there's a suitable temperature and it's a certain temperature so that it can be developed. And so as we're putting our petitions in the box, we know that God is not He's developing our Faith, my God, my God, because we know that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things to come, right? And so when we're writing down these petitions, oh God, we're writing them down, we're putting them in an incubator so that they can begin to develop. And so what's really developing during that time, what's really developing during that time is our faith, hallelujah, and our faith. Faith is being developed because we haven't seen what has happened on the petition yet, but yet we're believing God that it's going to happen. Oh my God, hallelujah. We're believing God that it's going to happen. And, and so we know that that, that, that that baby, when that baby is born too early and it goes in an incubator, the temperature is like the temperature inside of a mother's womb, right? My God, my God. And and, and, and we know that uh, uh, eggs and, and cells and bacteria, they go in an incubator. Why? Because we know that they can't grow in any kind of environment. My God, a baby can't grow in just any kind of environment. There's certain environments that the baby has to grow in. There's certain environments that the cells and the bacteria or whatever's happening has to be able to grow in. When a, a, a bird lays an egg, a, the egg goes into the nest and then the, the mother sits on top of the egg at a certain temperature. Uh, the, 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 uh, the bird has a certain temperature on their belly to put over the egg and because it can't just grow in any environment. Oh, Holy Ghost, let me slow down because I'm excited this morning about this word. Hallelujah. And so... God began to talk to me again about uh, incubation and, and environments and the environments that we're able to grow in and having faith and, and all of that being wrapped up together. My God, my God. And so... um and so, well, good morning, Sheree Watkins. God bless you, girl. Good to see you. God bless you. And so, we know that when a baby is in an incubator, uh, 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 we know that the baby is being separated. The baby is separated and the baby is being isolated. Because, for one, you got to be very careful because the baby's immune system has not developed yet. And so, we don't want the baby to catch anything. Hallelujah. And, and so, we know that there's a certain temperature that the baby has to be under for the liver and everything to be to continue to develop and to continue to grow and that's how God has us some of us are being separated we're being isolated because we need to fully develop we can't be any and everywhere we can't be with any and everybody we got to be separated because if we be with all of these people we know that our spiritual immune system has not 
fully developed yet. And so we have to be separated, my God, and we have to be incubated even with our petitions and the things that we're asking God for. It has to be separated. We can't go tell everybody what we're asking God for because some people out there will curse what you're asking God for. Oh yes, it's a real thing, right? And so we know that in the Bible, there were several people uh, who God had to separate and he had to isolate. And so one of the people that I can think of is David. David was separated and he was isolated. When would you ask? When he was being prepared. When he was being prepared, we know that David was out in the field and, and we know that he would protect the sheep and he was watcher over the sheep and he would protect them. But during that time, uh, beyond, beyond to him, he was being uh, incubated. What? He was being developed. He was being developed at that time. He was learning how to kill uh, bears and lions and tigers and <laughs> all of that, right? That's what we know. And so he was being separated and isolated for such a time as this when he had to become king. He didn't know he was going to become king, but God knew what was going on. And so even in your isolation, even in your incubation, even in your separation, you may not know what's going on, but I'm here to tell you today that God says you're being prepared. You're being prepared for that thing that I have for you. You may not know what it is, but I'm preparing you even right now. My God, my God. We remember that Moses was alone. There was times where Moses spent a lot of time in social isolation. He was he had to go up on the mount and there was times he had to go and, and, and God would show up to him. And, and, and we know that he was even alone when he was put in that little basket uh, on the Nile. Remember, his mother had him and he didn't want, she didn't want him to get killed. But there was a plan for Moses' life. Moses was going to lead the people out of Egypt. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He was there, He was going to lead the people out of Egypt. And there was a plan for his life. And so his mother had to isolate him. His mother had to hide him in a basket and push him down the river for in order for him to get to safety and God is saying I'm pushing you I'm isolating you I'm putting you in a basket I'm putting you all alone and I'm pushing you into your purpose hallelujah I'm pushing you so don't worry about the isolation don't worry about the separation I'm pushing you to where you need to be we remember that Elijah my God, Elijah, he was separated, right? When Jezebel was chasing after him, he was alone. He was by himself. We even can go to Jesus. Jesus was isolated. There was times where he was by himself when he went alone for 40 days in the desert with no food and, and he was being tempted by Satan, right? Because we know when we're isolated, we know when we're separated from people, we know that, that, that the enemy can play tricks on our mind, right? Oh, you don't have nobody. You you all by yourself. Don't nobody want you. Don't nobody like you. Then you begin to feel lonely and all of these things begin to happen. Isolation. But baby, let me tell you this morning that God is saying, no, that's not the case. You are not alone because I am here. I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never have you seen my seed begging bread. Amen. And so, he had to spend time with his father. We know that the woman with the issue of blood, there was time where she was by herself in isolation for 12 years. For 12 years, this woman was by herself because she was considered unclean. Have you ever been talked about and considered unclean? She don't have nothing. She ain't nobody. She 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 don't got nothing. She on welfare. She over there living in the ghetto in the hood. She this, she's that. All of the labels, and I remember uh, Minister Tammy put up a post about labels. People put all these labels on you. Oh, this woman with this issue of blood, she's unclean. She can't be touched. Don't go near her. You don't know what's on her. If you go by her, whatever's on her gonna jump on you. Come on now. I know you've heard these types of things, right? But she was in isolation and it was all good because it just took one touch. It just took one touch from the father, my God, for her to become whole, for her to become clean. My God, my God, the isolation and the loneliness, but Jesus was able to heal her. Jeremiah, we know him as the weeping prophet, and we know that he had many times of isolation. He endured the absence of a spouse and a family, and he was hated by society. My God, he was removed from all social events, and, 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 and we know that he was 
isolated, but there was a purpose and there was a reason. And then there was Paul. There was many times that Paul was put into prison by himself. Again, he was isolated, but don't take your isolation for granted. Understand that your isolation is your incubation that's going to move you into your purpose. Hallelujah. Your isolation is your incubation that's going to move you right into your purpose. That is the time where you're getting developed. That is the time that God is preparing you. That is the time that God is giving you exactly what you need to be able to stand, to be able to fight, be to be able to do kingdom work. Amen. And so uh, as I began to read and study the incubation and the, and the, and the egg process and, and how the egg develops, you know, when the bird sits on the egg and and then it hatches, excuse me, my God, uh, it talked about there was four different processes of this, uh, 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 of the egg being uh, processed. There was four different processes. And, and so the first of the process is the, the temperature. And we kind of talked about how the temperature has to be right. When that uh, a preemie baby goes in that incubator, they can't, it can't be cold and, you know, it has to be warm and it has to feel like they're still in their mother's womb, right? It has to be a certain temperature so that the different organs can begin to develop and, and so God began to say your temperature your spiritual temperature is your attitude it is your attitude and the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 29 it says whoever is slow to anger has great understanding but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly and so we got to understand uh, another version I, I like to read is people with understanding control their anger a hot temper shows great Foolishness. And so as we're developing, thank you, Holy Ghost, as we're in isolation and incubation, we have to understand our temperature, our attitude. How is our attitude towards one another? Because sometimes we can be in isolation so long and the enemy plays tricks on our minds that we begin to become bitter. We've been by ourselves for so long, we become angry. Then we start to blame other people. What does your attitude look like? Check your attitude because your temperature has to be right in order for you to grow. Grow. Your temperature has to be right in order for you to be developed and for you to, to be developed into what God has for you. Amen. And so we know that the certain temperature has to be maintained the entire time. And if the temperature is not maintained, you will begin, the, the egg will begin to die. My God, my God. And so God is saying this morning, check your attitude because sometimes your attitude is what's causing you to begin to die. Not a physical death, but a spiritual spiritual death. Your purpose begins to die. Oh my God. What God has for you begins to die. Those dreams begin to die. Your visions begin to die. Why? Because your attitude is not right. Amen. The next thing that has to be done in order for that baby chick to be a uh, 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 hatched is humidity. The humidity has to be right. The humidity in the air, right? And, and so the humidity for the first few days have to be uh, at a certain place. And then during the last three days, the hatching period, the humidity has to be even at a higher percent in order for it to hatch. My God. And I said, Ma, I said, wow. I said, God, well, what does humidity have to do with all of this? And he began to say humidity is your environment, right? Because you're not able to grow and develop in the wrong environment. You can't grow and develop in an environment where there's chaos, where there's confusion. You can't grow in the environment if you're in the wrong church. Come on, somebody. If you're in the wrong school, if you're around the wrong circles, you won't be able to grow. If everybody in your circle it, it doesn't want anything in life, they don't believe in God, They every time you tell them your dream or your vision, they throw it down, you can't grow. Oh, God, he just told me some of you are even uh, uh, hanging around the wrong in fa family environment. My God, sometimes even your family members doubt what you are doing. They doubt what you're saying. They doubt where you are going. Why? Because they see the mantle on your life. But of course, they have to curse that thing because they don't understand that thing. Hallelujah. But you have to get in the right environment in order for you to grow, in order for you to be developed. And so God said, check your environment. See, and your environment is a important. God put 
Adam in the Garden of Eden. He had to put him in the right environment. And so God is putting you in the right environment. So ask him, Lord, is this the right group for me? Is that the right group? Is this the right church? Is this the right school? Is this the right job? Is this the right environment that you would have me to be in at this point in time? And then the third thing is the turning the turning and I didn't even know this had to happen I didn't know that that, that, that turning the egg during the incubation uh, process it says it prevents the embryo from migrating through the, the albumin and sticking to the shell membrane I said oh I didn't even know that you had to turn the egg but I know uh, if you have chickens uh, it says you got to go out there every two to three days and you got to excuse me you got to go out there every three to five days and, and you got to turn the egg. You got to turn the egg. I said, well, God, what does turning the egg mean? And he began to speak to me and he said, turning the egg means turning away from your sin. Every few days, you got to check yourself. And are you turning away from the sin that's keeping you uh, 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 bound? My God, Second Chronicles 7 and 14 reads, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And God is saying you need to turn away from your sin. You need to turn away from the drinking. You need to turn away from the pills. You need to turn away from the drugs. You need to turn away from the adultery. You need to turn away from the fornication. You need to turn away from the jealousy, from the envy, from the hate, my God. God, my God. He says in order for you to develop as you're in the incubator and I'm developing you, I'm developing your faith and I'm moving you into purpose, you have to turn away from sin because sin cannot dwell in the same place that I am in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the fourth thing that needs to happen in order for that egg to develop is ventilation. It's ventilation. I said, oh God, ventilation. And I and I begin to think about, oh, how, thank you, Holy Ghost, the ventilation system in a house. And, and what does the ventilation system do in a house? It allows the air to go through, the, 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 the air or the heat to go through the, the, uh, the duct work and all of the duct work. If you ever seen the big round ducts, right? Uh, 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 and that's what the air goes through and brings the air conditioning in and out. And we know that the air conditioning um, unit normally sits outside of the building, right? And so it brings the air from the outside and it brings it in and it, and it can clean the air and purify the air, but it gives us air so that we can breathe. I said, okay, God, what does that have to do with this spiritual incubation? And he says that God breathed breath over you Add into Adam and it was new life. And that's John 20 and 22. He says, I need to be able to breathe breath over you. My God, I need to be able to breathe breath into you for you to become alive. Remember, he had to breathe breath into Adam for Adam to become alive. Hallelujah. And God is breathing breath over you this morning. He's breathing new breath into your uh, your petitions, into your requests. My God, he says, if you write your requests down, write your petitions down, make them known. My God, he says, I'm going to breathe new breath on them. And that was a prophetic word right there. Some of you need to write it down. Yes, you've been asking. Yes, you've been putting it in the atmosphere in your mouth. But he says, I need you to go ahead and take a pen and a piece of paper. And I need you to write your petitions down. Make your petitions known to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I will breathe new life on it. I will breathe breath into what you're asking for. And all of this comes in faith. All of this comes in faith. When that baby is being uh, in that incubator, you have to have faith that that baby's gonna come out healthy and that baby's eventually gonna come home. When that mother bird lays them eggs and, and she's laying on those eggs and, and that mother has faith that those eggs are going to hatch. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, that that egg is going to hatch and she'll be able to see her baby chicks. And so when you write that petition and you put that petition in your petition box or in your prayer, wherever you put your petitions at, my God, you have got to have faith. You have got to have faith that God is going to bring that thing to life. He's going to bring that thing to pass. And he reminded me of the scriptures and I'm almost done. And, and I know I'm going to probably run a few minutes over, but he reminded me of the scriptures in Hebrew 11. 
He says, sometimes you got to go back. Sometimes you got to go back. We were rejoicing over my friend's testimony on yesterday. And so that gave me a little bit more faith, even with my own petitions. But he said, sometimes you got to go back and you got to uh, remember what I've done in the past so that your faith can be increased. And so he took me to Hebrews 11. And so we know Hebrews 11 and 1 is now faith. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. And it is the evidence of of things we cannot see. And then he began to have me read down a little bit further and he began to talk about the days of old. He said it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. It was with by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood and he obeyed. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called call him to leave his home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child though she was barren. My God, my God, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. My God, it was by faith that Isaac promised blessings to the, for the future to his sons Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, he blessed each of his sons, each of uh, Joseph's sons and bowed in worship. It was by faith my God, my God, it was by faith. And so we must remember that by faith, that by faith, hallelujah. And so this morning, as you're in an isolation and separation period, as you're in that incubator and God is developing you, remember what your temperature is. Remember that you need to be turned and turn away from your sin. Remember that you have to have the right humidity and be in the right environment. Remember that at the end of all of that, God will breathe a fresh new breath over you. And that ventilation will be right in order for that thing to be birthed. But you must have the faith. The faith. Will your faith be shaken at times? Absolutely. Absolutely. Will your faith be shaken when, when, when God tells you you're going to get this, you're going to have this, you're going to be this, and then things come up, bills come up or whatever comes up, and you're like, well, God, how am I going to do this? And all of this is coming up on me. But he says, no. He says, no, daughter. He says, have faith. He says, I got you. I'm developing you. I'm preparing you. You're in the field right now. He says, but I guarantee you that Samuel is going to come and he's going to anoint you. I guarantee you that somebody's going to come by and they're going to anoint you into your purpose and into your destiny. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it for you. I believe God. I think I believe God that whatever you write down, whatever you put down, whatever you ask him for, that he is go he is faithful enough to do it. His word says it will go out and it will not come back to him void. No, it may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen a month from now, but it can. But in his timing, is when it all will happen, amen? When it's developed. You can't take that baby out that incubator until that baby is fully developed and ready to come out and be able to breathe on their own and their organs are all fully functioning. We don't want to take it out prematurely because the baby will probably pass away and die. And so we don't want to take out whatever that petition is. We don't want it, we don't want it to come to pass prematurely because it just may die. It may not work out the way it was supposed to. Because we're pushing, pushing, and pushing. Amen. And so I pray today that God breathes a fresh new wind over you. Over what you're asking him for. Mm. Over your situations. Over your environments. I pray that he changes your environments. That he removes you. I just see a picking up. A picking up and a, and a laying over here. I see. I don't know. Like, you know, like you pick flowers. You pick them. You know, you pick them. You pick them. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You pick them. And then you put the bunch together. And you put them in a vase. And it's so beautiful and it's so pretty. And I hear him even saying, I'm picking you now. I'm picking you now. I'm picking you now. To set you aside. 
to put you aside because you are different. Because you are called. Thank you, Holy Ghost. According to my purpose. Amen. And so, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Father, for you loving us, for you keeping us. Even when we don't feel like we're being loved or we're loved by people or by man, God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that we're not alone, God. But we thank you that you're there all the time, oh God. We thank you, Father, that during the times where we do feel lonely, we do feel like we're in our wilderness season, we do feel like we're in our desert, oh God. We thank you that that's a time of preparation. We're in our field and we're preparing. We're preparing. We're being developed. You're showing us. You're talking to us. You're keeping us, oh God. So open up our ears. So during that time that we hear your voice, God, we hear your voice and not the enemy's voice, but we hear your voice, oh God. And when it's time, oh God, that you're going to blow fresh wind on our petitions, you're going to blow fresh wind over us, oh God. You're going to pick us up and you're going to put us in the environment that we're supposed to be in. We're going to be right where you are, that you've called our name, oh God. And so we thank you now, God, and we give you all honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so God bless you. Miss Adela! Hey! <laughs> y'all, I seen Miss Adela. She got out the car. Y'all, let me tell y'all real quick and I'm finna get off of here. We were rushing, we were ru rushing, running to a uh, service, to my um, to, to a funeral service. And my husband got out the car. It was super windy that day. He left the door open. And I'm thinking to myself, why did he leave this door open? And so I had to get out the car, looking all cute with my heels on, go in the wind, go around and close the door. Miss Adela was sitting in the car next to me. She comes to the window. And first of all, I really didn't remember her face. And so I'm like, okay, this lady is at the, at the window. Lord, I, I'm going to put the window down just a little bit. And she said, girl, put that window down. I said, oh, Lord, let me be obedient and put this window down. And then she began to tell me who she was. And I was just so glad to see her. She said, don't you be mean to your husband. I said, I wasn't, but he should have left this door open. <laughs> That's why we got to be careful what we do out, right? Amen. And so God bless each and every one of you. Um, I pray that you received a word on today and that God takes, uh, takes you to higher heights, new levels, new dimensions on this morning. God is so faithful and he's so good. So just remember the promise. Remember the promise. And we'll see you back on here tomorrow morning where Minister Tammy will be blessing us with a word from the Lord at 530 a.m. God bless you and go out and have a great day.